Please welcome Harvard Business School graduate and Airbnb's Managing Director of Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Olivier Gremion. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of a water shortage, so I'll oh, get share. I got to share in common. Exactly. Perfect. So uh, I think actually, this is the third year you've been speaking at this conference. I think the first year you would announce that Europe had actually become, I think, the largest uh, regional market for Airbnb. Can you just give us an update? Is it still the case? I know you've been doing a lot in Asia, for example. Is it still the case? And can you give us a sense of kind of the size and the scope of, uh, of Airbnb in, in Europe? Yeah, so globally we have uh, over 2 million uh, listings of homes, apartments, rooms on the website. More than 50% of that is in, uh, is in Europe. Uh, uh, same thing on the number of bookings, whether you take uh, Europe as an origin or as a destination, it's over 50% as well. So uh, it's still uh, uh, the majority of our business. Uh, Asia is growing faster, but uh, Europe is doing a pretty good job and we have some uh, uh, new uh, uh, territories as well uh, coming up, like we are doing some work in the Middle East and Africa, uh, which you know is obviously growing much faster than the rest of the continent. So, so that's on the supply side. What about on the demand side? So Europe has an origination. Market. Yeah, the, the same thing. It's still over 50 percent. Obviously, uh, Europe has been impacted a little bit as a destination uh, uh, relative to the other regions based on you know. Uh, the events of the past few months, but uh, uh, it's still 50% of what we do. Have, have you seen, uh, given some of the events over the, the past couple of months, you had the, the Airbnb open event actually in Paris on the very weekend of, the, uh, of, those, uh, of those appalling attacks. Uh, can you just share a little bit about that experience and how did you deal with that? And, and you had, I think, what, 5,000 hosts? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the event was taking place on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and the events happened on Friday night. So uh, the first thing we did was to account for all the employees and all the hosts that we had. So we had 600 employees and a little bit more than 5,000 hosts uh, uh, in, the, in, in Harris at the time. Uh, and we had the good idea to actually organize uh, uh, dinners uh, at uh, hosts' place that night. So we had 1,000 dinners going uh, at the same time uh, in the city, across the city. Um, so hopefully everybody was accounted for, but uh, uh, business-wise, uh, it definitely had an impact on, uh, on our uh, revenues and our bookings, uh, pretty similar to what the other accommodation providers had, actually. Um, the attacks in Paris uh, in, in uh, January, uh, the industry recovered pretty quickly, actually. Uh, this one's gonna take a little bit longer. And you have some specific uh, origin markets, especially in Asia, where uh, the decrease can be as high as 60 or 90 percent. So uh, it's been it's been pretty brutal. 60 to 90 percent. So that's a little bit different from GDP, which I think Marcello showed us earlier was about 1.3 percent for, yeah. for Europe. So yeah. that's yeah. that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, so you have just launched uh, a new advertising campaign. We actually played a commercial. Uh, yesterday uh, for a different session. We're going to come back to uh, some of the reactions to that uh, on that session. But so the topic and the theme is live there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about who you are speaking to in that uh, advertisement? Yes, yeah, so the, the goal is really to, to launch what we call the Act 2 of Airbnb um, and really to, to show the shift from being a, uh, an accommodation provider to providing a bigger part of the uh, uh, of the um, uh, trip experience. So, um, you know, we are starting with this campaign just to show that the reason why most guests actually use Airbnb is to, uh, you know, live like a local where they are. Uh, and, you know, it goes through having a, uh, a specific type of accommodation because you stay at some this place. Uh, but there are a lot of other things you can do to make sure that you uh, live like a local. So one of the things we announced at the same time we started this uh, commercial campaign was uh, the fact that we are going to match guests and hosts in a better way so that you uh, have you know, uh, similar uh, needs, similar passions, similar, uh, you know, a lot of things like that. And we're going to match the guests with the neighborhoods better as well. 
Uh, you know, you might not want to stay in the same uh, part of the city if you are a family with two children or if you are a couple uh, coming to party somewhere. So, um, you know, that's the kind of things we're working on and we're going to announce more things in uh, uh, the Airbnb Open in November in LA. So, so a uh, central theme to this advertising campaign, but even going back to the very beginnings of, of Airbnb, it's always been about this idea of live like a local, travel uh, like a local. So I just, I wanna, if we can put up that, that slide. So we had recently done some research on drivers for travelers, why they, they use uh, Airbnb. And can you just advance it one? There's, a, uh, there's one of these options that I wanna highlight in particular, an arrow should pop up. Hit the advance button. Okay, maybe not. Well, if you go down four or five, and you can see actually meeting locals and hosts is relatively uh, is relatively small, right? It's not. It's maybe important for one out of four, one out of five uh, travelers who stayed in an Airbnb. So when I look at this, what's actually striking is at the top, it's convenient location and overall value for money, which is the primary drivers for choosing an Airbnb. So it actually looks like that's kind of how people choose hotels too, right? So how important really is that live there versus just the traditional I need a place to stay and it's about price and location? Yeah, living there is really a, a mix of different factors. In some cases, it's meeting locals, meeting hosts directly, and that's most of the time people actually book a private room more than an entire space so that you have more interactions with the hosts. But it's also you know, things that you see in this study, like the convenient location, where, um, an example, uh, at some point we were looking at some of the numbers in our big cities, and we saw a lot of Parisians booking in Paris, a lot of Londoners booking in London. And we were like, why do people do that? It's their own city, why are they booking in their own city? And what happens is, when family come to uh, Paris or London, they actually book an, uh, an Airbnb next door, so that they have the proximity of the family, they can spend some time with them, but at the end of the day, they are actually going back somewhere as well, which is the best of both words. Um, so the convenient location is actually something, you can actually, in every street in Paris, find a, uh, an Airbnb apartment next to your own apartment. So uh, that's part of living like a local somewhere. Um, same thing, the home life feeling, uh, it, it's something, um, I was in Dubai a couple of weeks, and I rented my apartment, uh, to uh, a couple with two kids, uh, you know, they had my place for the week uh, with the, our kids are pretty much the same age and they could feel at home. They had everything they needed from the toys that my kids play with uh, to the Nespresso coffee machine that I'm using when I'm, you know, waking up. So that's really a combination of different factors, not necessarily meeting people and interacting in person with people. But, but there still is this, this dynamic of you know, competition with hotels, you know, quite quite clearly. And I, the impression I've got from you know, Airbnb over the years, you tried to kind of soften that uh, that message that the business is is incremental to uh, the hotel market as opposed to directly competitive. But it does seem to suggest from here that you know, increasingly uh, those those worlds are are colliding. Well, it, it, we are we are saying that, but the hoteliers are saying the same thing, right? Like uh, uh, many of the hotel CEOs say that they made, you know, they did studies on uh, the cannibalization impact of Airbnb, and uh, it was marginal in most cases. Uh, uh, so there, there is really, I'm not saying there is no competition at all, no com uh, cannibalization at all, uh, but there is really, it's really minor in what they see. Uh, but, you know, yeah, when people travel, they look at the same thing, which is the amenities they have, the price, the location. So, and people on average look at tens of sites. Uh, so, yeah, they might actually look at an Airbnb listing and at a hotel and at, you know, something else, for sure. So, you know, also, I think central to the, the image of, of Airbnb is this idea of living like a local, of connecting with the hosts in particular, we saw in our study that the, the vast majority, I think like 90% of Airbnb guests interact uh, with hosts uh, and it, beyond messaging uh, and with key exchange, but also even in the home. So they're having uh, meals and, and even socializing uh, with the hosts. So how do you, how do you reconcile something that's, that's so central to the Airbnb uh, message and, and ethos with uh, the, the increasing attention to a lot of the multi-unit uh, operators that are, have multiple listings. And I know you're also doing some work in the, 
vacation rental marketplace where you're working with building connections to some of the big vacation rental companies that manage lots of condos, where you've got professionally managed uh, properties not managed by individual hosts with that, that local flair. So how do you, how do you reconcile that, that inventory and that, that message? Yeah, I think people look for different things. If I, you know, again, take my own experience, uh, uh, the guest from Switzerland came to my place. I didn't see the person. I left the day before, so I didn't meet with uh, with uh, with a guest. We exchange, you know, messages in advance and all that. But you know, he wanted to spend a week of vacation, five days of vacation with his family in Paris. He didn't necessarily want to have uh, lunch and dinner with me. So there are really different use cases. And in some cases, people like to have pretty, um, you know, uh, uh, apartments that are, don't have a lot of stuff either. Uh, you know, when you try, when you travel for uh, work, some people want the, mostly the convenience. The convenience. What we need to do a better job at, though, is to make sure that people know what they're getting into. So the pictures is a good way of doing that because when you have 25 pictures of a 50 square meter apartment, you kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, but I think we could do an even better job at making sure that people know whether they're going to stay at somebody's place or they're going to stay in a vacation rental uh, property, for instance, where it might be the secondary residence of somebody, but they don't live there most of the time. So that is something that we can work on. So you, you are looking to acquire, say, vacation rental inventory and, and second homes, and a lot of that inventory in certain markets is kind of hotel-like. It's you know, condos with multiple units and, you know, and tall buildings, all the units are, are more, or less, uh, more or less the same. So uh, what about, uh, what about uh, hotels? There's been more talk about the possibility of hotels listing on, on Airbnb, the economics uh, of, of listing on Airbnb as opposed to through an OTA are pretty attractive, I think, to, uh, uh, to hoteliers. So when are we going to see uh, the Accor brands, you know, listed en suite uh, across Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, it's actually funny because I do quite a few conferences with, uh, you know, hotel lobbies. They have their annual conference and, you know, they invite us quite often. So uh, the first year it was more like, what is this Airbnb thing? And then the second year it was, okay, it's getting big, we should do something about it. And then the past few years it's more that kind of question, which is uh, the, the fees on Airbnb is 3% for the host. It's like 17 to 20 plus uh, on our platforms. When can I use my space? So there have been definitely uh, an evolution in terms of uh, the questions. Um, but you do have some hotels that, that list. Do you actively push them off or you just kind of tolerate it? Or how, what's your view? Yeah, so there are a few hotels. It's a very minor uh, part of a website. We don't do anything to attract them. And uh, you know, if some of you are hoteliers and try to put your hotel on Airbnb, you can see how uh, complicated it is because the, the, the product has not been designed to have multiple uh, uh, room listings. So, uh, so no, it's not something that we're looking at, uh, you know, really focusing on, you know, trying hard to actually get on the website. So it's really more people putting it on the website and then it happens to be there. But uh, if you look at the number of reviews, I don't know if many of them are being booked actually. So, so no, no Marriott's in, in 2016? I don't have a big announcement no, 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 today no, no, for you. I'd have a start. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, one of the, the big debates around Airbnb has been the issue or maybe the perception of uh, of trust and, and safety, uh, but actually, you know, in, in our research, uh, that has not uh, come out to be actually such a big issue. I think one of the bigger issues is, is simply when you think about you know, Airbnb and kind of the growth and uh, the expectations, presumably, of a company with a $25 billion valuation. You want to reach the other uh, 75, 80 percent of travelers that haven't stayed in a rental, right? In the uh, in the past year, the things that keep them from considering rentals is actually not kind of trust or safety or concerns. It's actually the basics about the, uh, the hotel experience. They want the 24 by 7 you know, check-in in the front desk. They want the on-site F&B. All of those conveniences that are just so central to the hotel experience, but obviously uh, not there with the, the rental experience. So, are you, how are you looking at, at, at that space? You've got an interesting pilot that's got some attention in Sonoma, with Sonoma Selects and a lot of things that you're doing on the, the host side. Can we expect to see 
things to address some of that as you try to pull those non-rental travelers into the Airbnb fold? Yeah, so I, I think it's one other thing that segments really the, the, the population. If you're looking for uh, room service at 2 a.m., you're not going to find it on Airbnb. If you want to go in your bathrobe to a spa, you're not going to find that on Airbnb either. Um, so that, that's, you know, uh, hotels are very good at you know, many things, and people are still going to continue to do, go to hotels for a lot of time. And, and we don't plan to compete on some of these items with, with hotels. Uh, but some other people don't really care about having the newspaper delivered in front of their door every morning. Uh, they actually want to have a, you know, a fast Wi-Fi connection. They want to have a, an espresso machine to take a coffee when they arrive, and they want to have a little bit more space. So these people might be more amenable to actually, um, you know, book an Airbnb listing. But there are a lot of things that the hotels are doing amazingly well, and they will continue to do But that. you are pushing, for example, into the, into the business travel market, where some mm -hmm. of those services, are, I think, are more important to, to business travelers. And you have a different set of requirements, actually, for business, yeah. uh, business uh, listings. Could we see some of that potentially spill over into the broader? Yeah, yeah so that there are a few things of our business travelers that they're really looking for. So 24-7 check-in is one important thing, because you never know at what time your flights are going to arrive. Um, making sure that you have an ironer and an ironing board if you want to go to your conference and look, uh, you know, sharp, uh, and you know things like that, that uh, uh, high speed internet and things like that. So that's why we launched specific business travel ready listings uh, a few months ago. So if you see a small uh, piece of luggage next to the listings, it means that uh, they meet a certain number of criteria. Uh, but there are also a number of criteria that don't meet like room service, and it's not something we're getting into anytime soon. So I want to go back to the ad, uh, mm -hmm. which we, we played uh, yesterday, uh, in which uh, Airbnb made fun of Segway tours and, and bus tours and hop-on, hop-off bus tours. So I want to ask you, uh, when was the last time you did a Segway tour? I never did any Segway tour. Or really. a hop-on, hop-off bus tour? Uh, it must have been a few years ago. Yeah. Okay, so, but obviously a big piece of that ad is the launch of experiences, which is Airbnb's extension of the accommodation experience into the in destination things to do experiences. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is, uh, what that is about, that product? Yes, yeah, so the first stage of this is actually to uh, better source the activities that our hosts are already promoting to their guests when they arrive. So there is a feature on Airbnb as a host, you can actually put uh, uh, your uh, tips and addresses next to your listing. Uh, it was very valuable in the past because people could actually uh, Google list, uh, I look your apartment and I can see what you recommend to me. What we did uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago was actually to gather uh, these millions of uh, uh, recommendations uh, and, and provide them back to uh, the guests. So if you are in a specific city, a specific neighborhood, you can you know, find what are the uh, best restaurants or things like that that are being recommended by the host. So that's really the first uh, 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 um, step into recommending something that locals would do. Uh, it's not a recommendation by other guests, it's actually a recommendation by the hosts. So the ones that I have on the listing are like restaurants I go uh, with my wife and my family when I actually go to restaurants. So it's, a, it's another step into uh, uh, living like a local when you actually go in a place by staying in somebody's place to begin with, but by also doing the things that locals do when they actually do live there. Um, and then we'll extend that, uh, you know, uh, beyond just recommendation in the so, next few months. Well, there is, but there is some pilot with actual experiences where you can purchase a, a tour with a, with a local or, or a host. Can, what kind of success? It's going very well. Thank you. Well, so one of the discussions that we had you know, yesterday is, is around the, some of the challenges in the tours and activity space. It's such a big market, all of this apparent opportunity, but we haven't seen the kind of, uh, the kind of blowout success and growth in that category from an online shopping and booking and discovery dimension the way we've seen, for example, in uh, vacation rentals and private accommodation or, for example, in, in ground transportation. I, mean, I think. What do you think you guys can do here that will be uh, different, that will work in a way? There have been attempts in the past to drive kind of peer-to-peer. -peer. There are several startups that are doing this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, kind of tour 
uh, experience and destination, but I think they really struggle to, to scale. So what are you going to do differently? Yeah, I think that there are a few things happening. One is the, the guest behavior. A lot of the guests are actually uh, not booking these activities in advance, so they actually arrive in a, uh, in a specific location. They look at their guide, they, you know, they get some recommendations, and they actually go there and book their tickets right away. So that's why historically a lot of that has not been put online or mobile, because you know, people have other ways to do it. Uh, then you have a lot of players who are actually uh, uh, you know, getting into the activities business by trying to do uh, technical connection with other providers. And you know, there are tons of examples of that. If you can connect the big bus to your own platform, it's actually a good way to provide additional services, potentially help sell a little bit uh, to, to your general guests. Um, what we are into is more of this local and authentic experience. So our goal is not necessarily to have these big commercial companies linked to our website. It's more to make sure that the recommendations uh, uh, of the local communities is accessible to the guests when they actually do visit it. So I won't be able to book a hop-on, hop-off bus tour in Airbnb anytime soon? Well, the, the next Focus Right uh, conference is in LA in November at the same time our Airbnb Open is when we'll say more, so you're invited to come and we'll know everything. Okay, sounds good. Uh, one last thing I want to I bring up. Since the very beginning of, of Airbnb, it seemed like design has been very central to the, to the culture. In fact, I remember first encountering the site back in 2010, and it was just, just this big, beautiful picture of a property with a, a single uh, search field. Uh, but I've also been to your office in, in San Francisco, uh, which is extraordinary, and, uh, and you've just launched, a, or just opened the office here in, in Dublin. Can we put a photo up of, of the office here? I just wanted to ask, you take such a deliberate approach to, to design and in everything, not just the website, but the experience of, of employees. You know, the two of the three founders are from the world of, of design. Why is it so important to to the, the culture beyond simply the, the user experience online? Yes, yeah, so there are a few things. If you look at these offices, they are very open and bright and fluid. The goal is for everybody to connect as much as they can uh, within the office. And it, you know, we opened it two days ago, so uh, uh, you know, we'll see how it works, but so far so good from what I've seen the past few days. Um, and there is also the fact that we want our offices to reflect what we have on the platform. So one of the things we did very early is actually uh, to take some of the, our best performing listings and make them meeting rooms uh, in San Francisco. You might have visited a few. Uh, in this case, in the case of the Dublin office, we had the employees design some specific rooms themselves. So I was in the Mykonos room yesterday, and our Greek uh, uh, operations manager actually was the one uh, designing the room with a couple of others just to make it what he, you know, he has in his own home when he goes back to Mykonos. Uh, we have 26 different nationalities in the office in, in, uh, in Dublin, and so everybody brought their own thing and made uh, the, the space something that's, that looks like their home, so that they feel good in there, uh, and it also represents the diversity of the people we have. Right, ladies and gentlemen, Olivier Gremion. Thank you. Thank you.